In this video, we're going to use the sequence recorder to record animations made by Live Link. Let's take this battle sequence as an example. Now, the true goal of this lesson is to really have the ability to use multiple cameras anytime we wish. In this example, we've actually transferred three cameras. Now, you can see all three cameras here in Unreal. And if you select the camera, you'll see a mini preview in the Unreal viewport. Now the editor active camera is always going to show what's going on in the iClone viewport. But the other cameras are synchronized and they're going to show what they're currently looking at. There are several objects we're transferring with LiveLink. We have both the characters, we have several cameras, and we have lights. Now let's go over to the Unreal Engine and open up the sequence recorder. You do this by going up to Window and finding Sequence Recorder. Now that we have the Sequence Recorder open, we have a few settings that we're going to want to change. Let's go down to the section called Sequence Recording. It'll be down towards the bottom. Click on the little triangle and let's change some settings. On Sequence Length, let's change this to zero. Now if we scroll down, you'll see a section that says Reduce Keys and we have it checked. If you uncheck this, you'll get additional keyframes. Next is the default animation settings. If we open this up, we'll see several settings. The first setting I want to point out is you want to have remove root animation turned on. Now, the other thing is the sample rate. We want to set this at 60 frames per second. Now that we've set the sample rate, let's go to the project settings. Open those up. And in the search box, I'm going to type fixed frame. And you're going to see use fixed frame rate. And we're going to set this to 60. So both match. Our sample rate and our frame rate are going to match. The next area we're going to check is classes and properties to record. Now, when we open this up, you're going to see several classes that we have set up. And you want to make sure you have 0 to 5 set up. And if we look at these, the first one is the skeletal mesh. So we're recording that. The second one is Static Mesh Component. The third one here is the Light Component. Here is the Camera Component. So on the Camera Component, I'm going to click on the three dots and you'll see an Options panel open up. Now you can select anything you want to be recorded by the Sequence Recorder just by checking the checkbox. Here I've done Focal Distance. Focal distance is one that you'll probably do quite often. If we go to iClone here and look through our camera, you can see that we have a focus distance set up. And it's handy to have Unreal be able to record this feature. And if we play through the sequence, we'll see that depth of field really makes a shot more realistic. So it's a feature you'll often have. Now let's close this window and move on to the next section. Now that we have the settings covered, let's move on to objects. We're going to add some objects. Now I'm going to select iClone Origin. Now if you want to keep the iClone hierarchy, you have to add this first. Unreal could crash on you if you don't. Now if you're not using iClone hierarchy, then skipping this is fine. Next I'll select the Fight Camera and the Paladin Camera. Because we're using both of those, we're not using the directional light. We are using both fill lights, though, because they move with the characters. And, of course, we need both of the characters themselves. Now, the second fill light for the character is just called point light, just so you know. Then I'll click the Add button. Now that we have all our objects, we're going to double check and make sure that all the settings are correct before we record a sequence. So there are a couple settings I want to double check. So let me find the record transform. We want to make sure that is checked. It needs to be checked. And we want to find remove root animation, which also needs to be checked. 
and it is checked. And it never hurts to check our sample rate, which we need to have at 60, which it is. Now the last thing I want to do is go to the recording groups section. And I'm going to give this a name. So let's find recording groups. There it is. And let's change the name of our sequence to test one. All right, now we're ready to record. So I'll just go to the record button and press it. You're going to see a countdown. Now you're going to want to hit play in iClone as soon as it hits one. Now frames per second matter. A higher frame rate means a better recording. Now I talk about this in another tutorial which you can view. Now once this is done it'll think for a second and then it'll ask if you want to open test one in the lower right corner. Now if you ever need to find this sequence you can always go to the content browser, go to content, cinematics, and then sequences and under test one, you'll find the sequence. You can double click to reopen the sequence editor. Now that we have our recording in the sequence editor, you'll see a series of folders. If you open them up, you'll see individual objects. Like in the camera folder, we have our cameras. And you'll see that it highlights it in the world outliner when we select them. In the miscellaneous folder, you're going to find all our lights and our iClone origin. Now one of the things you're going to notice is that when you record, it actually duplicates all the objects. The duplicate objects are marked with a tiny lightning bolt. That lets you know that they are the copies. And here's the originals up in the world outliner. All right, so now we can scrub in the sequencer and see our animation play. But obviously there's the issue of having doubles for everything that was live linked. If I go back to iClone here, I can play this as well, and we see we have two of literally everything. So let's turn off Link Activated and hide these characters. So I'm hiding the originals, and I'm hiding the iClone origin duplicate as well. So now we can only see our animation. I'm going to select the Lock Viewport to Camera Cuts button, and now we can actually see through the camera, and I'm going to hit Play in the sequencer and we can watch the animation play through. Now, as we look at this, you're going to see that there are a lot of keyframes. Let me zoom in. And let's open up Paladin 3. And we'll go to the skeleton component, transforms. And here you can see location, rotation, and scale. Now, the reason the keyframes are so dense, one of the reasons is that we were running at 60 frames per second, but the sequencer defaults to 30 frames per second. So let's go here at the top of the sequencer and change it to 60 frames per second. Now our view of the keyframes matches our capture rate. So under skeleton mesh component, you're going to see this animation track that's purple called test1 underscore paladin3 underscore zero. And we can find this in the content browser under Content Cinematics Sequences Animation. And if you double click on it, you can actually see all the keyframes for every single morph that is attached to this character. And of course, now you have access to all the keyframes for each of these morphs. So now that you know how to find the morph keys for the night, let's go ahead and close this window and take a look at the monster. Now, just like our knight, you're going to be able to see the animation play, and you're going to see all the keyframes for all the monster's morphs. So now let's move on. Now I'll just close this window, and to review, each character is going to have a skeletal mesh component. And then you'll find a purple animation track underneath this. And this is how you access the animation for the character. Now that you know your way around the character animation tracks, let's start looking at the cameras. Now we have our sequence and we can see our keyframes here, but we need to move our mark out point and our mark in point closer to our sequence. Now besides moving the points manually, you can also scrub the timeline to the first frame 
right click and go set start time. Now this can also be done with the end as well, set end time. Now if you hit play in the sequencer, it's going to stay between the mark in and mark out points. So now we're just capturing our animation sequence. Now we're going to improve the camera work a bit. If you select a camera, click the little camera icon, you'll notice that the viewport changes. If I go to this camera, now we're seeing through this camera. Now if I go up here to the top track and I select the camera there, what we're doing is we're locking the camera to the camera cuts. So if I go to new binding here and I select Paladin, you'll see that now we actually have a cut between two cameras. Now you can actually move the transition point between the two cameras as well. Now you're allowed to click the plus symbol as many times as you want and create as many new bindings as you want to cut back and forth between the camera as often as you want. Now we're going to take a look at the sequence we have so far. It's looking good. Now let's go through a couple steps to make sure that we render it properly. All right, before we render this movie, we have to go back to the objects that we hid. Now they're hidden in the editor, but in order to hide them during the render, we have to change a couple things. So let's select the lights and the characters and go to details and search for hide. And you'll see actor hidden in game and check that box. Now that these guys won't show in the render, we can go back to our sequencer and we can actually select render this movie at the top of the sequencer. And now we'll set some options. We want to make sure we do 60 frames per second because that's what we've set everything at. Now with the resolution, you can pick whatever you wish, but be aware high resolutions require more RAM. Now I'm going to go to the animation section and I'm going to turn on Use Custom Start Frame. This is the endpoint in our sequencer. And now Use Custom End Frame is the endpoint in our sequencer. Now we just hit Capture Movie. And Unreal is going to ask you to save the project. This is a safety precaution and we're going to go ahead and do it. Now as soon as it's done saving, it will start rendering the sequence. And you'll see the sequence in the upper left hand corner as it's rendering. Now it's going to go through the entire sequence and when it's done you'll see a message in the lower right hand corner saying capture finished open capture folder and there will be your render. At this point you have all the information you need to use the sequence recorder to make any movie that you would like.